There are four key categories of technologies, all of which are improving by double-digit, maybe triple-digit basis every year. Each one of them is disruptive in its own way, but they enable one another, and when combined with one another, they create a virtuous cycle of disruption. The next big disruption, electric vehicles, or should I say oil? Tesla Model S, the best car ever made, according to Consumer Reports. Not the best EV ever made, the best car ever made. Consumer Reports gave them a rating of 103 out of 100. I mean, it sounds like a movie, right? It's 11. It's not 10, it's 11. Um, so it, 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 it's so good. Um, and it's already become the best-selling large luxury car in America. Best-selling. They're beating BMW, they're beating Audi, they're beating etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? Um, but of course, who can afford an electric vehicle? Now, that is not my car. It's a good photo op, but it's not my... I actually don't own a car. Uh, I'll get back to that later. So, but before I do that, let me, let me ask the question and answer it, whether the EV is disruptive. Because is it just another Ferrari or Porsche, or is it really disruptive, and what does that mean? So the internal combustion engine, so I'll give you four reasons quickly. The internal combustion engine is about 17 to 21 percent energy efficient. So 80 percent of the energy in the tank actually goes up in smoke or in heat. Now, some companies will cheat to make you believe otherwise. I won't say who. But, you know, there are laws of thermodynamics that prevent us from going much beyond that. Now, the electric motor is 90 to 95 percent efficient. So three to five times more efficient. Now, that in and of itself is not disruptive. But when you combine that with the fact that electrons, electricity, uh, are easier to transport and cheaper than uh, atoms, meaning gasoline or diesel, then you get that once you buy the car, on a per kilometer basis, an EV is 10 times, depending on the market, 10 times cheaper to charge on a, on a per kilometer basis, 10 times. Every time you have a 10x improvement in an important dimension, you have a potential disruption. And in fact, if you power it with your own energy, then it's zero marginal cost, right? Um, maintenance, this is your car, assuming you don't have an EV. Uh, your car has 2,000 plus moving parts. 2,000 plus moving parts. The Model S has 18. Should I say that again? 18 moving parts. That's fewer than 1% of the moving part of the internal combustion engine automobile. Now, what does that mean? Maintenance. Maintenance is essentially zero. And that's why companies like Tesla are offering infinite mile warranty. You, you can drive this thing to the moon and back, and they'll still warranty it, right? That's 1% of the moving parts. Um, and for the consumer, that means, again, zero marginal cost of maintenance. And you can't compete with zero marginal cost. Um, the electric motor is, of course, uh, for those of you who own or have driven an EV, way more powerful than the internal combustion engine. So the Tesla is you know, being compared to the million-dollar supercars, right? Um, like the McLaren and the Ferrari and so on and so forth. Cars that cost 10 times as much. That's because the, the electric drivetrain is so much more powerful. So here's how the disruption happens. For 100 years, the automotive industry has told us this. You want high performance? You pay big bucks. You want medium performance? You pay medium bucks, right? What EVs are going to do is shift that equation to a point where the uh, gasoline and diesel uh, cars cannot compete with, cannot possibly compete with. So you'll soon be able to get Porsche performance for Buick prices. And at that point, neither Porsche nor Buick will be able to compete. 
right? So more performance for lower price, zero marginal cost or almost zero marginal cost. Now, when is that going to happen? I'll show you. Now, <laughs> yeah. Um, so here's the 16% cost curve. I mean, essentially, the battery is the main cost element of, of the EV, uh, or at least the highest cost element. Um, so if we start with the Tesla $75,000 in 2014, um, we get that EVs, not just Tesla, but the industry, uh, at the existing curve of batteries, will be able to build a $35,000 to $40,000 EV by 2017 uh, or 2018 that go 200 miles. Now, the minimum range to go mainstream is 320 kilometers, right? Uh, anything below that is not going to go mainstream. So my calculations I'm doing with 320 kilometer range and no subsidies. Zero subsidies for anybody, right? So the EV industry will be able to offer $35,000 to $40,000 EVs with 320 kilometers by 2017. By 2020, the industry will offer $30,000 EVs with 320 kilometer range and almost zero marginal cost of ownership for $30,000. Now, why is this point important? The median new car in America is $33,000. So uh, by 2020, maybe before, if the curve accelerates, EVs will be cheaper to buy and they will be 10 times to 100 times cheaper to maintain. So just like film cameras gave ways to digital cameras, essentially at that point, it'll make no economic sense for anybody to pay more money for, for a gasoline or diesel car, and that costs also 10 times as much to maintain. So this is the tipping point. The tipping point in the auto industry is going to come around 2020, maybe 2019. Uh, by 2022, even the low end, the industry will be able to build a $20,000 EV that's going to be the low end of the market. So essentially what this cost curve says is by 2025, all new vehicles will be electric. All new buses, all new cars, all new tractors, all new vans will be electric. Anything that moves on four wheels will be electric by 2025. All new vehicles will be electric. Um, globally. Globally, not, not in the US. Um, so what is the industry saying about this? Well, GM just announced the 200-mile bolt, and it's going to cost unsubsidized $37,500 and it's going to come out either at the end of this year or beginning of next year. That's smack in the middle of my curve. It may be a little earlier, actually. $37,500. Um, Ford has said that they will invest $4.3 billion in electrification. They're basically going all out into electrification. Not only that, they've said that they're going to become a mobility services company. So they're not only going to do uh, EVs, they're also going to become like Uber. So they're going to be in the mobility services business. And so is GM. GM invested uh, half a million, uh, half a billion dollars into Lyft, which is Uber's competitor, and also just bought a $1 billion self-driving car company. Um, so, but whatever the incumbent companies do, in the end, won't really matter because most disruptions happen from the outside. And Foxconn has announced almost a billion dollars investment in making EVs. Foxconn, the company that makes your iPad. Apple is building one, Uber is building one, Google is building one, Xiaomi is supposed to be building one. So a number of computer companies are also getting into the EV market. Why? Why? Because EVs are computers on wheels. I mean, they have 20 moving parts, and they're moved more by computers and software than by people. Um, so 
And there are things that might even accelerate this. There are companies that are offering free charging anywhere. Go to buy, uh, uh, you know, to your supermarket, free charging, right? Go to Walmart, free, mar free, free charging. Zero marginal cost. You can't compete with zero marginal cost. Um, and one more reason to be disruptive, you can actually power your house with your car. In fact, this technology is ready. Uh, and you can power your car with your house, right? Vice versa. So um, I actually did the numbers for Norway. And when every car in Norway, all two million of them, cars plus uh, vans, uh, are fully electric, basically they'll be able to store almost 50% of the daily electricity demand in Norway in cars. Essentially, these things are power plants on wheels, right? 50%. Get that. Try that with your VW diesel. And by 2030, it's going to be over. And this is not in the future. This is happening right now as we speak. Thank you.